I feel like I've been saying this way too often in this my sixth season, this beginning of my sixth season covering the Giants, but they drop the opening series. However, it's just one game and there were a lot of positives to take away. There was just kind of one bad inning that spiraled out of control for the Giants, but hey, it's just one game. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Also been now, like I said, hosting the show for over five years. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Check us out there if you have not already. Please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you're following the show. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. And coming up on today's show, yes, we are going to break down the Giants season opener in San Diego. There were a lot of, a lot of positives to take away from this game and the real one negative is that they didn't win and they put themselves in a position to win uh, with a nice little comeback but then immediately in the bottom of the seventh you had Luke Jackson come in and just kind of implode and then end up exiting with an injury and I'm going to discuss why I didn't feel entering that inning like Luke Jackson was really the guy I wanted to be in that spot personally but I think the number one takeaway is that this was obviously just one game. I said prior to the game yesterday, look, in a 100-win season, you're going to lose 62 times. And the Giants won 107 games in 2021. They lost 55 times. And they also lost their opener that day. And it was even worse of a situation. I don't know if you remember. It was in Seattle. Uh, They had a big lead and then the bullpen just completely gave it back. I want to say they were up like five or six runs and they ended up losing that game and they ended up winning 107 games that season. And so that's just a reminder that uh, in you can't judge a team based on one baseball game, win or lose. I said we won't overreact unless they win. And so that was kind of, of course, a joke. But in all seriousness, I think the best thing that happened out of this game Uh, was that Logan Webb looked like Logan Webb. Like, Logan Webb had a miserable spring, and yet he went out there and shoved against the Padres here on opening day. Um, His spring training numbers, I actually thought that I could pull him up here, but his ERA, I think, was over 10. Like, he just got shelled in spring training. And so it's a good reminder that uh, spring training, I mean... Look, it's also just one start for Webb, but at the same time, I mean, he was just carving up the strike zone and pitching out of some big situations. Ground ball rate in this game was 53%. Um, Kind of a normal thing, like pretty normalized statistics after just one game. Like the batting average on balls in play against him was pretty normal at 294. He stranded 71.4% of the base runners he allowed, which is exactly his like literally exactly what his career norm is strike struck out 21 percent of hitters career strikeout rate is 22 and a half percent so just kind of a typical logan webb start and he ended up going uh he pitched deep in this game i mean he pitched six innings allowed two runs and just kind of bowed his neck in some big situations and definitely put the giants in a position to potentially win the game the giants did take a lead Uh, with a run in the third the Padres then came back with two in the bottom of the fifth and the Giants came back with two in the top of the seventh uh, to take another lead but then four runs were given up in the bottom of the seventh with Luke Jackson and Ryan Walker responsible for those runs but I don't know I I, like I do think it is a big deal like your, your stud your ace Logan Webb going out there and just performing like 
he like last like last year and like the year before and and that the spring training results don't really mean anything and this is a good example of that it's kind of crazy how you can struggle so much in the spring and he said he wasn't he was not thinking about mechanics when he was out there in the game yesterday it was just adrenaline going and he had some extremely nasty pitches like i saw i was actually at the game but he you know the the sinker he threw i think it was to jackson merrill uh froze him it just had a ridiculous started at the hip of the left-handed hitter and just came back right over the heart of the zone so the hitter thinks he's going to get hit and meanwhile it's right down the middle at like 92 and so i don't know webb looked great i think that overall the lineup showed fight they did strike out too much which you know was a problem last year but i wouldn't anticipate um I mean, Mike, just everybody struck out like one time, basically, except Wade didn't strike out at all. And Mike Yastrzemski struck out three times. And uh, Nick Ahmed, by the way, uh, didn't strike out and had a couple of big hits. And Michael Conforto had a great game. And so these are two guys, you know, you want fans who wanted Luis Matos and Marco Luciano, <clears throat> the two players who are taking the spots of Luis Matos and Marco Luciano ended up having the, you know, being the biggest contributors. And so, yeah, for Michael Conforto, what we saw out of him was a three hit game, including a home run in the ninth inning to pull the Giants to within two runs. And from Nick Ahmed, we just saw uh, a couple of big hits and drove in the first run of the season with a sharp double down the left field line. And I just, I also was impressed by the defense. I know that in that fateful bottom of the seventh, there was a Patrick Bailey of all people error that kind of allowed things to spiral in addition to the Padres just not being able to make it out, it seemed, in that inning. But defensively, I mean, what we saw out of Ahmed, what we saw out of Tyro Estrada making an amazing play, um to nail a runner at home plate and then just Matt Chapman like defensively on the infield the Giants were really really impressive in this game and I think as the season goes on if you consistently are going to get that kind of defense which I think is what you should expect if you're talking about Nick Ahmed and Matt Chapman and Tyro Estrada and the underrated or you know at least solid uh, defensive pairing of Lamont Wade Jr. and Wilmer Flores over at first base. But Giants did ultimately lose this game, so we're going to break down what went wrong. Uh, Luke Jackson's injury, who might replace him, a rookie making his Major League debut, who was very impressive. So, so much more to get to, and we'll do that in just a minute. And before we do... Today's episode is brought to you in part by our good friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is the place to bet on the college base, uh, not college baseball, college basketball tourney. Say goodbye to those busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. And if it were me, I'm just saying you can place that $5 bet on a heavy, heavy favorite. And again, if that bet wins, fanduel.com slash locked on, then you get 200 in bonus bets. And so again, just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Today's episode is also brought to you in part by Prize Picks. That's right. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS, daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers, which I love. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you just pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. I'm currently looking on my phone right now uh, at both Joe Musgrove and Kyle Harrison. There's kind of a strikeout um, situation here with Joe Musgrove at three strikeouts in the first three innings. 
more than or less than. Kyle Harrison, two strikeouts in the first two innings, more than or less than. And for me, I'm probably I think I'm gonna take more than on both of those uh both of those situations. And also one of the great things about prize picks is that it is available in more than 30 states, including, yes, the great state of California. So download the app today and use code locked on MLB, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today, use code locked on MLB, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. All right, as promised, we are going to continue to kind of break down this opening day loss for the Giants. It is unfortunate that they lost this game. They were definitely in a position to win, but they did ultimately fall with kind of a bullpen meltdown. And again, this is what happened on opening day in 2021 in Seattle. Uh, Go look up the box score from that game. Giants bullpen just completely collapsed and they ended up having I think they led the league in bullpen ERA when the season was said and done and so you can't judge Logan Webb you can't judge any of the hitters it's just one baseball game and every team's going to lose a ton of games even if they're going to be a really good team and the Giants lost it's a good Padres team you're on the road it was a pretty electric crowd there Anyway, thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day or tomorrow, or excuse me, on Monday, we're going to be breaking down the the rest of this series. Hopefully the Giants able to bounce back. Um, we, My phone is ringing, even though it is supposed to be on silent. Um, it doesn't make any sense at all. But anyway, we're going to be breaking down the rest of this four-game series on Monday and previewing their upcoming series against the Dodgers. That's why it's tough. I think you got to take care of business and win a couple games here because going to LA is not going to be an easy task at all as it won't be for any team. Uh, Anyway, uh, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top Sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And I also just want to give a quick shout out to um, uh, Eric Engel, who, if you're following this feed, he's doing postcast after every single game. So that is obviously different than what I do. It is a new thing for Locked On Giants. Not only do we cover your team every day, but now we're giving you instant episodes after every single game. Check out the Locked On Giants postcast right here on the Locked On Giants podcast feed, as well as streaming on the Locked On uh, Bay Area YouTube channel. Get rapid reaction right after the game to all the biggest moments with the Locked On Giants postcast hosted by Eric Engel. And I'll be making appearances on that show, and he very well may be making appearances on this show. But they're they're going to be out on the same feed. But I will continue doing my normal thing Monday through Friday, Giants analysis. So, yeah, so the Giants melted down here in the bottom of the seventh. Luke Jackson just couldn't get anybody out. He ended up, you know, not getting a single out and allowing two hits and a walk. And in between there, there was a Patrick Bailey error on a throw down to second base. Just kind of slung it, sidearm, short hop, Nick Nick Ahmed, ball bounced off his chest, trickled out into the outfield, and, you know, all heck broke loose for the Giants in this inning. I didn't feel great about the decision to go to Luke Jackson uh, in that situation. Uh, he, I, I kind of thought like Ryan Walker um, maybe made more sense. You do have to take into consideration the fact the decision the Giants made to carry only 12 pitchers, including a pitcher in Blake Snell who's not even able to go until maybe the end of the LA series. And so they were they're kind of short on arms when you look at who's on this roster. You know, the bullpen featured guys like in that situation, bottom of the seventh. What I didn't if you you know, Camilo Duvall, Tyler Rogers, Taylor Rogers, Luke Jackson, Ryan Walker. So I would have thought Tyler Rogers, 
Taylor Rogers or Ryan Walker. I'd kind of have all of those guys ahead of Luke Jackson. Just, I didn't, you know, he's just been a little, he wasn't exactly to me like shut down last season, although he did have a 2.97 ERA. You know, if you look at the number, the thing is he only pitched 33 innings. He was kind of hurt a lot. So I don't know. The, the numbers last year were pretty good pretty darn good for Luke Jackson, but the the body of work wasn't really there, whereas you've got like a workhorse in Tyler Rogers. Um, what it was for me was the part of the lineup that was coming up for the Padres. You had a couple of left-handed hitters mixed in there. I think, uh, I think it was Campuzano who led off the inning, and I do believe that he is a switch hitter. Um, not 100% positive on that. Uh, you would think on this page. Oh, no, he's a right-handed hitter. And so, okay, never mind. You go to the, I think it was Campuzano leading off the inning. And then you had, uh, you had a couple of lefties kind of mixed in there next, including Jackson Merrill. And so, I don't know, Taylor Rogers, I would have felt good about. Um, I guess it's hard to, totally second guess that decision i just wasn't thrilled to see luke jackson come into the game he does struggle with command at times ryan walker if you're if you want a right-handed pitcher i think that walker uh would be a little bit ahead for me and and same with tyler rogers like you've got a lot of options to get you nine outs but at the same time you know everyone's got the jitters on opening day the butterflies and also luke jackson ended up hurting himself in this inning he ended up uh, calling out the trainer once he walked uh, the final hitter that he would face. And so he's probably going to have to go on the injured list. I think he said something like he hopes he can only be out a few days. But I don't think the bullpen can withstand him being out because they're already short-staffed. They're going with a bullpen of, what is it, uh, seven pitchers when normally – you got five starters and eight relievers, but, and then, and then one of your starters, Blake Snell, is not even in that mix right now uh, to make his start. Otherwise, he would start the second game. It wouldn't be uh, Kyle Harrison starting the second game. It would for sure be Blake Snell. But the good news is Snell pitched in a minor league game yesterday and should be able to go potentially at the end of the Dodgers series. So really just missing one start would be the the kind of plan there. So we'll obviously update you as we hear more definitively. And that, that would help a lot. Like imagine if you had Blake Snell going tonight. Um, I don't know, Kyle Harrison, the sky's the limit, but at the same time, he's young and unproven, um, relatively unproven. Uh, he could dominate. That's why I'm taking like on prize picks, the over or more than on two strikeouts in the first two innings. I just think he has that much strikeout potential that I would just feel pretty comfortable taking more than on that. But I don't know. I didn't love the decision to go to Luke Jackson. I just didn't love it at the, at the start. And sure enough, like it kind of didn't, it didn't work out. Um, One pitcher though, who did uh, really stand out was Eric Miller making his major league debut uh, made this team and is 26 years old and was a 2019 draft pick. So this is one of the new regime's picks, fourth round pick. And, oh, I take it back. I take it all back. He was drafted by the Phillies. And so the Giants acquired him. I do not remember exactly how they acquired him, but it is his major league debut, and he was kind of just blowing smoke and uh, blew some hitters away and just had a very impressive outing. So coming up in just a minute, we'll kind of Put a bow on this game and get you set for game two. There, you know, Jung Hoo Lee's major league debut, a lot of debuts, Giants debuts, major league debuts in this game. So we'll put a bow on all that and get you set for game two of this series and kind of even the rest of the series, given that we won't be back until Monday. So all of that in just a minute. And before we get into it, Today's episode is brought to you by our good, good friends over at GameTime. GameTime is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which means getting tickets 
even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And you know, for me, my favorite thing is you get panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Like, who wants to buy a ticket when you don't really know for sure what your seat is going to look like? And so I'm, you know, I often travel to new stadiums and this is a game changer for me. And also something I worry about is getting the lowest price. But with Game Time, you can rest assured if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. That's their lowest price guarantee. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. For a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app with code First Pitch. Terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, as promised, we're going to just put a bow on this season opener for the Giants. It did not go the way that they wanted in terms of the results in the win-loss column. But at the same time, like I said, there were a lot of positives. I think that defense um, kind of shined, except for the you know Patrick Bailey, who's a defensive stud, like making an uncharacteristic short hop throw that kicked off of Nick Ahmed. It, it kind of wasn't his fault. There was... I don't know. It, it was, but there was just traffic all over the place. I'm not sure it would have made much of a difference, even if that ball doesn't kick off of Nick Ahmed. It was just an inning that snowballed into a disaster, which had more to do with the pitching than the error by Bailey. Um, but otherwise, I mean, the offense, Michael, like I said, the two guys who are taking the spots of Marco Luciano and Luis Matos, who were perhaps unpopularly optioned, uh, had the biggest impact on this game outside of Logan Webb in a positive way in Michael Conforto. I mean, I guess you could say, oh, Mato should be playing instead of Yastrzemski. I, again, Yastrzemski started off really poorly last season too, and then he got hot. And then he ended up having a mediocre year overall, but he also dealt with injuries and he kept getting hurt right when he was getting really hot. And so, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. I do think uh, Mikey Stremski, I said this yesterday, he's probably going to go on paternity leave. I know he is because his wife is scheduled to have an induction to have their second child today. And so he's going to leave. And uh, I would imagine Luis Matos gets the call there. And since Austin Slater is more of a platoon player, I would not be surprised at all if Luis Matos is in the starting lineup in left field, Conforto in left, Jung Hu Lee in center, Luis Matos in right. That's going to be my prediction there for what's going to happen, as I suspect that Yastrzemski will go on paternity leave, given that they have a scheduled birth, basically, of their uh, second child. And he might be gone for a few days. And so there's opportunity number one for Luis Matos, in my estimation and guess, uh, of many opportunities that will come his way this season and he's 22 years old it's not the end of the world that he got optioned and and he'll have plenty of chances and yeah we just got to let it all play out but yeah it was not a good first game for Mike Yastrzemski at the plate he did he did make some really nice plays um defensively there was one play in particular where he kind of ran a ball down uh, towards the line and and that that was huge the Giants defense just in general I thought looked pretty good um, except for that play by Bailey so Eric Miller like I said making his major league debut wasn't drafted by the Giants but had a really impressive inning following that kind of disastrous seventh Eric Miller uh, picked up the slack in the eighth and that was the final inning pitched by the Giants but he was hitting hitting upper 90s um, and uh, was just really good from the left side. And right now he's the only other lefty on this team uh, in the bullpen besides Taylor Rogers. And so he could get a real shot. And, you know, Joey Bart was really 
complimentary of Eric Miller after the game. He he said that guy's a big leaguer. He said last year he was a big leaguer. When you look at his numbers in AAA, um, he walked too many guys. AAA walk rate last year of 18.5%, super high. So that, if anything, is going to be the issue is command. But, you know, through one game, he didn't walk anybody, and he threw a bunch of strikes. And so that, that was nice to see. The other kind of things to put a bow on this one is, uh, I don't know, Giants debut, Matt Chapman made some really nice plays. Jorge Soler was kind of a non-factor out of the DH spot batting second. I think that was kind of a key to the Giants not breaking through, like having a big game offensively. They did have some opportunities, first and second, nobody out, and they squandered that. I think they had a runner on third, less than two outs at least once, and squandered that opportunity as well. And so did the Padres. The Giants pitched through some jams as well. But Jung Hoo Lee made his major league debut, Giants debut, struck out looking on a pitch, I want to say it was like right down the middle in his first at bat to open the season, but he also collected a hit and hit a sacrifice fly in this game. So overall, a productive day at the plate for Jung Hoo Lee. There was one ball that was hit to him that I thought he had a chance to catch that he kind of pulled up on, but again, it's one game and a little too soon to make judgments, grand sweeping judgments about the team or any individual player. So I want to see more defensively out of Jung Hoo Lee before we make any evaluations there, given that this is his first game in the major leagues. But he showed, I think it was with two strikes, he got a ball in the air with the runner on third, less than two outs that was deep enough to score the run. And then he did collect his first major league hit as well. He was picked off immediately. So look, he's got a little adjusting to do, but Overall, getting that first hit out of the way and hitting that sack fly made it, to me, a productive day at at the yard for Jung Hoo Lee overall, despite getting picked off. So previewing what's to come, this is where the signing of Blake Snell is super significant because imagine if you didn't have Blake Snell. Like This would be the rotation that you're looking at um, with Kyle Harrison going second uh, as he is going today with Jordan Hicks third and we're imagining maybe Keaton Wynn starting that fourth game and then the fifth starter would have been I don't know Mason Black uh, and that's not really quite deep enough for me and that's why signing Blake Snell was so huge and so under normal circumstances if Snell was ready to go like I said you'd go Webb who had a very good start You'd go Snell second. You could go Jordan Hicks third. You could go Kyle Harrison fourth and Keaton Wynn fifth. All the while waiting on Alex Cobb, who is progressing quickly uh, and will lengthen out that starting rotation. And then eventually Robbie Ray as well. And so the Giants, when all is said and done, I mean, that could be just a like one of the best rotations in the game. And you could just get consistently excellent performance out of pretty much everyone in your in your rotation, um, and that's something to dream on. But right right out of the gates, we have to wait a little bit. I think you know Snell. We'll wait on Snell, and then we'll wait on Cobb, and then we'll wait on Robbie Ray. But in the meantime, I mean Kyle Harrison is the top left-handed pitching prospect in baseball. He goes tonight, and then Jordan Hicks, who let's I mean he has looked really good again spring training. Just like with Logan Webb, we can't read too much into the negative. But let's think back to Jordan Hicks, Hicks's last spring training outing coming in a major league park against a quote-unquote major league team in the Oakland A's. I say that a little tongue-in-cheek. But five innings, ten strikeouts, no hits, one walk. I mean, I'm going to be very interested to see how Jordan Hicks performs in that third game and then there is a fourth game I worry a little bit about the Giants pitching in that one I don't know exactly what the plan is but there we'll see what they do here with Luke Jackson maybe having to go on the injured list with Joey Bart maybe uh, getting getting DFA'd or traded because they're not going to be able to just carry three catchers for super long especially when you're losing pitchers that like they're already short on pitchers and then somebody goes down in Luke Jackson yesterday so that's kind of my preview of what's to come. So a lot to talk about on Monday. And that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Everydayers on Monday, like I said, we are going to be 
discussing the rest of this series. Hopefully the Giants can at least uh, pull off a split here. It's going to be tough, like I said, going into L.A., so you don't want to have a disastrous opening series for sure and then have to go on the road into Los Angeles. So again, enjoy the postcast after today's game with Eric Engel. And um, yeah, he's not replacing me or anything. We're working together. It's not going to be on the YouTube feed. you got to subscribe to the, what is it, Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel if you want to watch that on YouTube. And that'll be live on YouTube. And then it goes not live, but after he's done, onto this podcast feed. So just to, uh, con- continue to remind you that that's something that's going to be happening all season long. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance, and thanks to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again on Monday from Los Angeles. So thanks again for listening today. Uh, hope you enjoyed the opener despite the loss, and, and hopefully the Giants can kind of come through and pick up a couple wins here uh, in the rest of the series. But yeah, thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.